The average female guppy gives birth to somewhere around two or three dozen babies every 30 days or so, but this number can range anywhere from two to three babies for a young female to well over 100 for a larger adult. The baby guppies are just under a quarter of an inch in length at birth. A common problem for many people who are new to breeding guppies is that their tanks don't provide nearly enough hiding places for the newborn babies. So, many if not all of the little guppies are eaten by the hungry adult fish. These straws create lots of hiding places to help keep the baby guppies from being eaten. If you increase the number of hiding places, you will increase the number of guppies that will survive. When they're first born, the little guppies can't swim very well, and this is the time when they're most likely to be eaten by the adults. The baby guppies don't need to be fed right away, but they do need safe places to hide and rest while they adapt to their new home. Be sure to notice how large their eyes are relative to the rest of their body. Mother Nature puts a lot of time and resources into the early development of their sense of sight. A keen sense of vision helps the babies avoid potential threats as well as locate food, so it's crucial for their survival. In fact, the eyes are even further along in their development than their fins. And speaking of fins, this fin is called the anal fin, and in about three months from now, when this guppy reaches sexual maturity, if it's a male, this fin will turn into something that looks like this. This is the anal fin of a mature male guppy. This special fin, known as a gonopodium, is used to deliver packets of reproductive material to the female during internal fertilization. Now let's take a look at the same fin on a female guppy. Her anal fin is shaped like a triangle and it has none of the special modifications that we see in the male guppy. The shape of the anal fin is the most reliable way to tell a male guppy from a female. The second best method of sexing guppies is to look for this dark spot just in front of the anal fin. This is known as the gravid spot and it only occurs on female guppies. And while we're on the subject of fins, these two fins right here just in front of the anal fin are called ventral fins, and baby guppies don't grow these until after they're born. When they're first born, baby guppies are unable to float, so swimming is difficult, and most of their time is spent resting on various objects in the aquarium. In order to be able to swim properly, the baby guppies will first need to make the dangerous journey to the surface of the water. Once at the surface, they'll need to repeatedly swallow small bits of air until they can inflate a special organ known as the swim bladder. A properly inflated swim bladder will enable the baby guppy to float in the water without having to use a lot of energy swimming to keep itself from sinking to the bottom. Watch closely as the little guppy jumps out of the water in a desperate attempt to try and swallow more air. Swimming like this must be incredibly exhausting, but until this newborn guppy can inflate its swim bladder, it has no other choice. This little fish can survive without a working swim bladder, but it will never grow to its full size and it will spend most of its day sitting at the bottom of the tank. The straws provide places to hide and rest, and this is especially important for the fry who are still trying to inflate their swim bladders. Objects near the surface allow the baby guppies to take a break and still remain near the top of the tank. Providing cover for the babies near the surface of the aquarium is just as important, if not more important, than providing cover for them near the bottom. Remember, the baby guppies need to make it to the top of the tank without being eaten by the adult fish along the way. Here's another newborn guppy resting on a straw just beneath the surface. 
a strong current in the aquarium will make it more difficult for the little guppies to reach the top of the tank, and the more this little fry has to struggle to get to the surface, the less likely it will be to survive. So, it's beneficial to have areas of the guppy breeding tank where the water is relatively calm. The baby guppies are usually swimming near the top of the tank just a couple hours after they're born, and I begin feeding as soon as I see lots of babies swimming near the surface. The guppies will begin to get their colors when they're about four to six weeks old, and they should have their full coloration by the time they're two to three months of age. Baby guppies grow quickly. They'll reach sexual maturity at around three months old and are said to be in peak breeding condition when they're between the ages of three to six months. This little guppy has fully inflated its swim bladder and is now floating comfortably at the surface of the aquarium. Baby guppies have very tiny mouths, so they'll need tiny bits of food. However, they can eat the same food as their parents, it just needs to be crushed into very small pieces. A quality flake food will work just fine for the average guppy breeder. Since guppies are adapted to feed near the surface, a floating food is especially helpful. Reducing the flow of water in the aquarium will help keep their food from sinking too quickly. You can turn the filter off for a few minutes to reduce the flow of water in the tank while you feed. Just don't forget to turn it back on when you're done. For those guppy breeders who really want to go the extra mile with their guppy breeding projects, then hatching your own live baby brine shrimp is probably one of the best foods to get them off to a good start. Guppies need 8 to 12 hours of light each day, but they also need to have periods of darkness when they rest, so don't leave the aquarium lights on at night. I recommend using an automatic timer to help you maintain a consistent lighting schedule. A timer will also prevent you from accidentally leaving the lights on for too long, which could cause an outbreak of algae. The tiny little creature that just appeared on your screen is something of a mystery, but it swims in a spiraling pattern that is typical for an organism known as a dinoflagellate. Dinoflagellates are neither an animal nor a plant, but contain characteristics of both. These types of organisms are known as protists. And there's the spiraling pattern of swimming that I mentioned. Just a couple hours after they're born and the baby guppies are now swimming out in the open, but they're still very careful to keep a safe distance from the adults. As long as these babies are small enough to be eaten by the adults, they will need to be provided with some sort of cover where they can hide. Keeping the adult guppies well fed will also go a long way towards keeping the baby guppies from being eaten. Drinking straws are made from a food-grade plastic, so it's safe to use them to help you breed guppies. I tied the straws into knots and placed them in the breeding tank. They float, but that's helpful because, as I mentioned earlier, the baby guppies gather at the top of the tank. Since the straws float, I had to either push them down with the aquarium cover or hold some of them down with a heavy object such as a rock or a large piece of driftwood. If you'd like to try this technique to help you breed guppies, instead of going out and buying new straws, I suggest repurposing used straws that are destined for the trash. These recycled straws are great for use in situations where you don't have the number of plants needed to properly protect the fry from being eaten. The straws can be used in temporary birthing containers, or they can be temporarily added to an established guppy breeding tank when a female is about to give birth. The main drawback to using straws is that a baby guppy could swim into the open end of a straw and then become trapped inside. I've only seen it happen once, but it's something to consider. Meet Gilbert the guppy. I use scissors to cut him free. One possible solution to this problem is to stuff the ends of the straws with filter floss so that little guppies like Gilbert can't get inside. While straws are useful in some situations, live aquatic plants are a much better solution for protecting the babies from being eaten. 
aquatic plants such as guppy grass and hornwort are both excellent choices for keeping the adult guppies from eating their babies. And that's it for this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and use the notification bell so that you can be alerted the next time I release a video. And, as always, thank you for your time.